Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, February 5th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. It's been determined length, episode number 682. And it's been a while since I did a perfect intro. Congratulations! Yay. I can tell that that's motivation for you to do it more. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, it's that time of the month. No, it's not that time of the month. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> but uh, hey, hey, have you what? Have you watched The Last of Us? Uh, <laughs> Offerman? Do I need to say mo- any more? <laughs> that's my segue into the I, topic I, okay i was i was wondering <laughs> i was wondering so uh for those of you that listened to last week's episode 681 where we did what's going on for january this year um when we got towards the end of the show we do these things called links and i had picked the last of us from hbo max and at that time i had right. only seen the first two episodes Right. And then episode three came out. Right. And then episode three came out um, and the world, the gay male world, the gay gamer world, like Mm -hmm. the gay um, world. Yeah. They um, they went through heartbreak um, and like kind of lost their shit, but not in the like excited way in the like uh, grief way. And I found that very intriguing. I didn't watch it Sunday night and we recorded and then I, you know, I got a job, I got to go to work. Um, So I went to bed, but I watched it Monday night. And by then, like so many people had like posted in, in my sphere that were sharing about this moving thing. Um, So this week I was thinking about it repeatedly because it, it does make an impact and and a hell of a one um and so uh i'm not going to get into the whole like this diverges from the game and changes things and blah 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 like there's plenty of stuff that's been said about that but what it made me think about was um what the representation is in, in entertainment media so um i kind of have some questions But I want to preface and say, um, like in pre-show, I happened to find that that there was a Guardian article that had just come out. Um, I don't know if this is dated. Uh, Yesterday, Saturday, February 4th, it came out. And it's an interesting piece talking about um, queer love, um, especially in this particular TV series. So I do want to say this. um, Bill and Frank, the two characters in The Last of Us, to our knowledge... Granted, this is post-pandemic, 20 years on. uh, If you believe in the lore of the game, it hasn't been said in the TV series. 60% of the world population is gone. Mm -hmm. Um, So your ability to meet other people and have a connection with them is changed. And I don't know if anybody really has certain labels, and specifically one of them is being a bear. That being said... Nick Offerman and um, Murray Bartlett, who play Bill and Frank, 
are two bearded gentlemen uh, who wear flannel, long sleeves, jeans. Um, one of them is more artistic. One of them is more like uh, militaristic. I don't know if that's the right way to say that. Um, <laughs> the one character. Survivalist. Notably, yeah. Yes, correct. Is a survivalist. Um as opposed to a doomsday or a prepper. It's a, it's a cute little line as a distinction in the show. But conceptually, like these two random gay men find each other and then they have this relationship, um, a notably a lengthy relationship. Right. Um, and you get to see this. Like there are time jumps, but it's very interesting. Um, and in the development of it, uh, there is new experiences for, for them. Um, and so it really got me thinking about like where where has this been? Where have we been? Are we being seen? Like that kind of stuff. So that's really what the, what my question was in, in kind of posing about today's show was like bears in entertainment media today. Like are they there? Do we do we see them? Do we need them? Um, you know, because like I understand, you know that we are going to project onto them and probably be like, sure, these aren't big guys, but they are in a way filling in on that masculinity trope or concept mm -hmm. jewel, mm -hmm. like kind of thing. And for anyone who has ever been a fan of, of Nick Offerman when he was Ron Swanson in Parks and Rec, which I will admit I have never seen, but people really kind of liked his, I guess, like dry wit character, his porn stash. Um, <laughs> the fact that he's married to Megan Mullally, a.k.a. Karen from Will and Grace. People feel like he's an honorific gay. Uh, like, you know, um, so and and he's very open to to anything. And I will admit in watching this episode, watching him kiss Murray, I was pleasantly surprised that i didn't ever feel that there was some reluctance mm -hmm. i mean there there is reluctance in a certain moment but that's because of the character not because of the actor like right. sometimes when i see gay intimacy um i always feel like especially if i know which one's gay and which one's straight <laughs> that, that like there's sort of a you can tell who's like who's authentically been in love or had an intimate moment with the same gender person, and then the other one's like, eh. right, right, right. Like for me, I feel it. It's it's wonderful to see, and I agree. It is. It's. I don't want to say it's about damn time, but time, but it's about damn time. And <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, I wasn't, but like, it feels. It doesn't feel for, and that's I think what it is for me. This doesn't feel forced. This doesn't feel like it was pushed into the narrative for the sake of buzz, our ratings, our, our contra potential controversy or anything along those lines. This was, I think, a genuine story. I've not watched it myself, but I don't, I'm not going to watch it because I don't have HBO Max. Um, but um, the whole idea behind it, I, I understand. And I understand that there's been more of it in recent years, not just this, but other representations. And... It's great to see. It's amazing to see. You know, we are of a generation where this was just on the cusp of being put out there in media. Um, you had shows like Will and Grace. You had shows like Queer as Folk. But a lot of those shows, unfortunately, were showing a what we would consider a stereotypical version of queer life. Um, well, it, it, right. And, and I'm, I'm kind of drawing a distinction to be fair. Like there's been a slow progress of LGBTQ plus representation and entertainment media. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most infamously we were all around and alive and probably witnessed when Ellen DeGeneres in her television show, the character came out that was uh, according to the internet, April 30th of 97. Like right. almost 25 years ago. Right. Uh, so, yeah, there there has been progress in certain areas. But I was kind of thinking about, like, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm wondering, like, are we at a point now that that the world 
doesn't feel that we have to have every flavor of representation. Because there was a little while that I know it seemed like we were the it thing. And by mm. it, I mean we were the topic. Like in, in sitcoms or, you know, different things, it was kind of like, oh, there's a bear, grr, you know, and like, you know, <laughs> just, just kind of goofy stuff like that. Or they would use the label bear as a quick like kind of funny recognition of a fat gay man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I always kind of felt like I don't need them to wave a bear pride flag, but I feel it's a little pandering. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, there like one of my like random memories, there was an episode of The Simpsons, and it was I think Smitters and Homer were walking into I think apparently they're you know because Springfield apparently has a gay a- area or gay neighborhood and there's a f- always a parade it was it was sitcom comedy animated show so it was that kind of thing and I'm, I'm not full of things but the per- the float comes by and someone is yelling at Waylon and the first thing that I remember him saying was like who's the bear and I was like Speaking about, they were talking about Homer with Waylon. And I was kind of like, <laughs> I get it. I get it. He's a big, you know, bigger, you know, heavy set male uh, with a scruffy, you know, stubbly beard. Because that's why his muscle is always that color. Um, and I was kind of like, I, 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 I get it. But like, why? Why was that a choice why was that a thing and i think it was just to like right. give a stereotypical you know moment of it and, and nothing more than that and i agree there's been good representation in the media entertainment media of us and there are of bears and there's been not so great entertainment you know media and it's but it has i agree with you i think there was a moment where it was kind of the niche it was kind of the like here here here's a bear like um throwing another tv show in the line there's the family guy where they did the goldilocks into three bears like that kind of thing and it was like yeah like oh okay That's well good. i find that interesting because while you were talking about the simpsons i was attempting to quickly reference like to look for that i'm not i've seen the symptoms but i'm not like a follower or avid watcher and i didn't know that there's a character named grizzly sean i didn't and either he was according to the simpson wiki he was first introduced in the season 22 episode flaming mo uh where he repeatedly tried to ask mo out and has since gone on to become a common filler character in episodes uh, that involves Springfield's LGBT community. Um, and apparently he has a husband named Barry. Um, <laughs> and he might have some kinks. Oh, I remember him. Oh, my God. And it says Sorry. his nickname, Grizzly, is a reference to Bear Pride, an LGBT branch made up of bear-like men. And then in parentheses, it says hairy, tall, fat, and stocky. Hey, listen, not all of us are tall, for the record. <laughs> Some of us are pocket bears or pocket cubs because genetics. Okay? <laughs> I like the bear handbook's uh, basic description of husky, hairy, and homosexual. Right, right, right. right. Let's let's not start limiting things based on height or whatever. But I, I think the Simpsons like introducing a character and having it in several episodes over the series is a little different. Like I think maybe the first time they introduced them, it might have been part of that, like, oh, this is part of the zeitgeist, like bears are in or whatever. And then over time it's like, well, now we've created a character, we can use them as needed. Mm. Um, I don't know for, for certain, but yeah, like it, it, it kind of intrigues me. I will say this. There was one thing that was slightly disappointing about Nick Offerman in the episode. Um, Nick is more trim than he has been in the past. Mm. I wouldn't say he's thin. He has a little bit of a belly. But um, I was like, huh. Like Murray has has never as an actor necessarily been a big guy. Um he was in Looking. Um, he's uh, in the White Lotus. 
apparently mm-hmm. and people love yeah. him in the white lotus yeah. uh so um he's hairy though uh because baby <laughs> there is a nude scene semi nude scene uh, in this particular episode of The Last of Us, uh, that motherfucker is furry as hell across his chest. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> that's a nice little, like, soft, pillowy area to lay your head. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I, um, so it, it was intriguing to me, but both of them are a little bit kind of on the on the trimmer side. Like, if you looked at the couple, you might say that, uh, I'm trying to think, that... Frank, I'm going to screw up their names as which is uh, right as Frank is kind of more of an otter and Bill's a little bit more like towards a bear. But it's kind of neither here nor there. I just I, I bring that up because there's another part of me that thinks like, are we still in a fat shaming or fat phobic like mm. part of entertainment media that they're just not like really representing that? Um, yeah. You know, to have a bigger bodied person on screen and if they are more often than not from my personal recall i feel like they're clean shaven um like you know it's like they're 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 still idolizing or representing this like 50s all like american male like ideology that's been carried down for decades and it's kind of like have you looked around on the street most men have facial hair these days kids like I know when I was born in the 70s, growing into the 80s, like that was the norm was that men just kind of didn't have facial hair. My father repeatedly in his young adult life was called a communist because he grew a beard. Now Mm. you have to think in the concept of the time frame and the Vietnam era and the Cuban Missile Crisis and like these things that were happening. You know, I was surprised to hear that growing up that, you know, my dad had that personal experience. And what I find interesting is, you know, when it came to the 90s, beards, facial hair really started coming in. And now we're in the 2020s and like nobody thinks twice about a man having facial hair right, right. Of, of any kind. In fact, it's more the norm than anything, um, which I am quite content with personally. Um, but yeah, I, I so I'm kind of wondering, is it, you know, that that. That, yeah. you know, the 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 decision makers in entertainment media, um, the casting people, whatever, are still making it difficult for us to see ourselves, quote unquote, in the in our portrayals yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah, like. I'll go back to I'll just use the example that came to my head, which was bros, the movie bros. Um if you've seen that movie, it's a lot of there's a, a spectrum of people, but the main characters, the main cast are kind of like the smaller guys, you know, the thinner sculptor. Like while I think um the same just left my head, Billy Iker Iker has a bit of you know chest hair and what have you. Um I don't think the other one, the other character does. And then um, the only bearish type person that you see as part of like the cast is Guy Branham, who I'm thinking is traditionally clean shaven and bald, you know, right? And bald. Like, so it kind of fell into this. I don't want to say trope, but I think it's that like we don't want to see it too much, even though you've got other characters that or at least background characters that kind of would fall into this, the type that the bear type. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I agree. I think there's a bit of a misrepresentation of community. Sometimes, you know, we fall, the, there's a lot of falling into stereotypes. And then as you mentioned, the fat phobic, you know, fat shaming, what have you does tend to happen. You don't see a lot of bear movies. We have to make our own sometimes. Um, and we have, and, and we have, but even those, not always the. There's sometimes the larger type, and I mean, uh, oh, was it Bear City? Bear City is one of those examples where it was geared towards us, and it was able to pull a larger, broader spectrum of types, 
And I think that worked at least for us, but you know, would that work to mainstream? Mm. Well, that is interesting because I was just thinking as you were talking about Guy Brenham, if someone had asked me if Guy Brenham was a bear, I would have said no. Right. But now this is my personal opinion. I would have probably labeled him as a chubby guy, like mm-hmm. as a big guy, but I wouldn't have labeled him as a bear. And that isn't to say that he wasn't, that there was no real representation of him as a bear, so to speak, or referencing of the bear or bear community. Um, I also am a little cringy as, as I'm saying this because I'm thinking to myself, like, he probably, because he was there to be comedic element, it would have been like a, a pun or like a funny throwaway thing or whatever. And I'd be like, please don't right. do that. Um, because it doesn't happen that often within our own community. Um so that's where I'm like, I don't know if it's very authentic, but mm. so yeah, um, Dustin said in the live chat, I also feel the term dad bod has changed in the past decade to include a bigger belly guy, which I find interesting because I've, I've had that observation. So um, I have to look up this character's name or kind of stuff. Uh, well, because I'm thinking of, um, why is he not listed? That's weird. Uh, why am I not seeing him? Anyways, Chris Pratt, uh, he was in the office, right? Yes. Yes. I don't know why he's like, I'm looking this up on the internet and he's not listed in the cast. That's so weird. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Um, Hey, Google, why are you leaving him out? Or is there a very specific reason? Anyways, um, <laughs> when he played Andy, if I remember that's his character's name, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't see the show, like he was this doughy kind of guy, but with a beard. And I was under the impression a lot of guys in the community were like, oh, like, blah, blah, blah. He's so cute and this and that. And then, you know, he ends up moving into Disney and Marvel and becomes um, Star Lord. And he drops mm-hmm. this weight and everybody was like, what the hell? Like, uh huh. And they all kind of like kind of had a shit fit about that. And I was like, people are allowed to do what they want, you know, and mm-hmm. and if that's the direction he's gone, that's the direction he's gone. Do I do I also agree I'm not as attracted to him in like a trim body? Yes. I I like a I like a man I can grab onto something. Um <laughs> That's the way I feel. I'm not saying he's a twink. I'm just like, you know, hmm, yeah. There's there's something about that. But it's interesting because I think the character of Andy in entertainment media probably would have been adopted by the community as a bear, and they might have even said that he has a dad bod. That I think originally some of us used to view like a dad bod was a person who got older with kids and like moved away from their 20s or their youth where they like worked out regularly and Mm -hmm. like because to be fair that's kind of a a common thing in at least in the u.s of like the american like you know human species is like when you're younger you're like trying to get a mate or have a partner and so you're working really hard like having a presentation it's kind of like you know birds and plumage or whatever you know it's like you're trying to draw somebody in and then once you gain the partner you're like okay i'm done with that or i don't really have to do that or whatever because (laughs) at a certain point you're like we've been around each other we farted in each other's faces like we put each other's hair back like like whatever you know it's like you know um you know, someone may have like passed a little gas while, you know, getting pounded. So, you know, you you share these moments of like humility or whatever. And so it's like once the relationships, I think, well established, the concept of working to preserve or have this physique shifts. And so, yes, for quite a long time, daddies, quote unquote, were not necessarily healthy trim guys like in a common a viewpoint of some people was like, you know, they were guys, I don't want to say that let themselves go, but they also kind of didn't need to like be as focused on that. And right. now what I think Dustin is pointing out, what I find very interesting is like, yeah, now it's interesting that the guy's like, oh, I have a dad bod. Like I see this, especially <laughs> this reveals some things. I see it on Chatterbait. Guys are like, oh, I have a dad bod. And then I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, you got a little bit of a pooch. You're good. Right. Like you kind of have a belly. Oh, that's, no. not, that's not a, that's not a dad bod. Like maybe you're a real dad. 
And maybe that belly came out because your dad, but it's not what I think of mm. that way. Yeah, I've just... had I've had feelings about dad bod for a long time, and I I get it, but I don't. But it has become. It was one of those things where, and I'm appreciative of it in a sense because it allowed for people like, well, I'll just put it like that, like like Chris Pratt and and, and Nick Offerman to do and be cast in roles because we were seeing the more um, average body um, being applauded as before, more than it was before. Um, yeah. I have to make a quick correction. Wrong, wrong situation comedy. It was Parks and Recreation. There oh. is a distinct reason why he was never listed in the office because he wasn't in it. <laughs> I and this just goes to show that. what I watch of common television because I haven't seen either of these. But anyways. <laughs> I did notice. I was like, oh, he was on Parks and Rec and I didn't say anything because. <laughs> it's okay. You can correct me and be like. No, I did. Got I, it it wasn't, wrong. I wasn't thinking about correcting it. It was just like I didn't remember what you said before. Yeah. No, he was in Parks and Rec and so was Nick Offerman. Um, right. Yeah. That was tangential. Like... But yeah. So I don't know. Like. I... But so if we're not really seeing the if we're not really seeing bears on entertainment media. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There's been an uptick, quote unquote, like if you did a statistical study and put it on a plot, you know, plotted it on a graph, there would be some type of like upswing or it would kind of like go up and kind of bounce around a little bit. Um, I guess this is kind of the the other part of it is, you know. Has the bear community peaked in terms of entertainment media? When you look at the broader LGBTQ plus family, because we've been integrating into the global society. Like this is one of the things I've thought about quite a bit in my adulthood is like, we come from a generation, the three of us of like not having rights. Um, like we, we are, relatively shortly post Stonewall. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we we were born in the people get rounded up and put in jail or cited for just being themselves. And then in the 80s, we grew up through the AIDS epidemic. Mm -hmm. And so just like being gay, quote unquote, could kill you. Uh, and so we've seen this evolution over time about like representation, um, equity, and we saw the passage of uh, quote-unquote gay marriage. So it, it's always made me wonder, because I've been active in some type of organization since I was in college. After I came out, I joined the Student um, Bisexual Gay and Lesbian Alliance and like did things post-college. Still to this day, I'm active in the community in various ways, and it makes me wonder like there was a shift over time about rights and legal representation and access to things. And as those things have been happening, it makes me kind of wonder how much more of that like is needed. And, and I'm going to, I'm not talking about today's current political situation in the U S because <laughs> that's a whole other episode. Right. But I just kind of wonder, like, you know, as, as you're gaining all that stuff and it's like you can be married and you can adopt kids and you can, like, you know, have yourselves established and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, does it. We, we kind of become homogenized, so to speak, into the broader population, then. Like, does it matter that we see representation in entertainment? Mm. Yes. Okay. I think it does only because it shows in a, to a broader extreme that we are accepted. And while we have all these things, we're still we're still not done. We're still, you know, we're being challenged as we speak on things. Mm -hmm. um, so the world are at least we'll say for now, the United States 
putting the stuff out there, putting these representations out there, showing realistic, in air quotes, um, versions of our queer, of our lives allows for, I think, people to understand the respect that we're all kind of the same in a way is we still love, we still hate, we still care. Um, this, you know, last of us episode is a perfect example of like showing a relationship over many years, mm-hmm. um, build and grow and then finding things that they can do together and enjoying their lives. And also to the other side of it, not wanting to see the other one go. Mm, right. And that showed, I think that's a wonderful way to show that we're the same. That we are, you know, just as capable of love. Our love is not as invalid as one would, would, would want to think. And allowing that and seeing that and showing that and putting that representation out there is how I feel others that may not always see that to get more comfortable with it. Right. Well, I think it's interesting that you're like, yes, we still need the representation. And a part of me realizes I'm listening to you, Damon is maybe that's what helps combat the potential like change or the minds that people are like, y'all, y'all have been like, you need to slow your roll. Like, you don't need to be like making all these advances. I'm uncomfortable with all of this like stuff, that all this gay stuff or whatever. Um, like, I don't know how else to phrase it because it's just not part of my world. But mm-hmm. uh, I feel like maybe, maybe that is a key to it. Is like, and, and this is pretty true. I think more often than not, the the higher rates of exposure incidents um witnessing whatever that is the more an individual i feel becomes acclimated because uh i feel like it's interesting i was just seeing um i think there was an article that made reference to sally field i believe has a gay son Mm. and the reason i bring it up is because sally field's in a new movie that's coming out um and when I read that, I was like, oh, it's not something I didn't I don't remember hearing about that before. But then there's a part of me that's like, but maybe that's the whole point that like we don't have to have celebrities have gay kids or LGBTQ mm-hmm. plus kids. But then if they are and they know from having a firsthand experience, they sort of become the allyship that we wanted in the 80s and 90s and the aughts. Like, do you know what I mean? To get us. Mm-hmm. And to get the broader understanding that these are just, we're all just human beings. End of story. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. The, um, the, go ahead. The separation, the, um, while it is a, I don't want to say needed, it, 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 you know, if, while it's there, it shouldn't be what keeps us separated. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I know that sounds a little weird, and, but like the the I think the goal of putting things like that out there is for them to see us as them, right? And I know it's hard to see, and we're you know we're going to deal with it, and in, in I think for many years, uh, because we've still been dealing with it in one way, shape, or form. But um, it's getting better Mm -hmm. over time. And we're making movies. And while, for example, Bros was kind of panned and and, and what have you, um, a lot of it, it was great that it was able to be made. It was amazing that it was able to be, you know, put in there. And, and, it was supposed, you know, I don't think to the full extent, but it was put out there as a, like a every other rom-com, every other movie that is put out there that where you would have a man and a woman as the, as the lead, as the romantic, you know, leads. It was advertised in that way. 
or at least they attempted to. Um, was it that successful? No. Um, did they do everything they probably could have? I doubt it. Um, but that's kind of where it comes to. Um, and this show, The Last of Us, as, an example, as another example, we're dealing with a popular game franchise mm -hmm. that has been adapted to TV, um, which means that they're allowed to tell other stories. They're making um, I, one of the things I remember people saying, like, if if you just wanted a shot for shot remake of the game, just play the damn game. The visuals are amazing from what I've, I've seen of it. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you wanted that, then you can just play the game. Right. Uh, this allow this method of storytelling allows them to expand upon and create these other stories that either are a part or may have been a part of the you know process and thinking of how they're building these characters for the game. Right. So what I find interesting about that was so when Craig and Neil went and took the game and turned it into the series, Neil was the the creator um, of The Last of Us. And what I find interesting about that is that uh, as the basically the person that, you know, birthed and oversaw The Last of Us as the game, they did have a. a a gay character this being bill in the show and the storyline goes slightly differently you don't get to see this whole other thing that they developed for the episode what i find interesting is that craig who came in who did chernobyl um and other things and has been a writer and doing stuff in hollywood um in an interview recently he made a comment and i didn't realize this well someone made a comment that one of the two creators of the last of us is gay this was not the same uh, episode but then i was listening to craig talk about like how by fleshing out this whole other story about a relationship and a dynamic and growing old um you know i, I found that very interesting and so i guess in a way craig has done exactly what we're asking questions about or talking about having that representation um, right in in the entertainment you know media landscape um, it's interesting because uh, I'm I'm inappropriately curious to know if Craig considers himself a bear or not, and hmm. it's not relevant. It's not important. But there's a part of me that's like, if I knew people in California that happened to see him and he was out, you know, at a bear pool party or whatever, not likely. Uh, but if they did, I'd be like, cool. <laughs> you know, like, um, like I think of like Dean Dubois, right? Uh, okay, um, <laughs> that man. Um, he is openly gay, openly out, married, identifies within the community, um, likes bigger guys, and I don't think he's necessarily done anything intentionally to have gay, like, bear characters. But that man, like, helped birth and bring about, um, uh, oh, my God, I'm completely blanking on this. That's, on stitch? No, the Viking. Um, uh, how, you, how to Train Your Dragon. Thank you. <laughs> um, with How to Train Your Dragon. And through the course of, like, the, the different, like, television episodic side series and the movies and stuff – one of the characters you find out is gay. And I'm like, okay, like no one's necessarily, and granted this is a whole different like time reference and stuff. So he doesn't, he's not a bear, but the fact that he's a big Viking dude, like, come on. Like, is there, <laughs> is there anything else that you didn't do to like kind of make him, uh, so to speak, one of us? Mm -hmm. So I, I find that very intriguing um, where that's kind of like, I don't think he, like, I don't think Dean was trying to like soft lob a ball to the community and be like, I see you, I'm part of you. And here's a little representation. I don't think that's what he was doing. I mm -hmm. think it was merely like, isn't this an interesting character development that 
viewers have not necessarily known, because to be fair, this particular character has been presumed single for quite a while, and then you sort of discover this about them. And I'm like, oh, well, isn't that interesting? Which to me is like better entertainment than having it like just presented. Laid out, yeah. Right. It because like the thing that's the thing I kind of like. It's it's not the focus of his story. It's just another nuance that you learn throughout the, either throughout the story or even if it's not in as developed in the series. Um but it's there. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, it shouldn't change anything that he has done. Kind of go, oh, okay, now this and this and this makes sense because of what we know now. Right. So, yeah, like, I, I mean, I'm hoping for the future that there's more representation, but I don't want it to be like they checked a box. Uh huh. I would like it to be that they do it just because they do it. But I have a funny feeling the only way you get it is because whoever's on the writing team or is the director or something makes that happen. Right. Because I, I just don't see Hollywood today, quote unquote, like being that uh, representational. I don't know. I could be wrong. I mean, there, there's definitely been some forward momentum in terms of, like, women in, you know, being actresses, being directors, like, being mm-hmm. producers, um, people of color, specifically. Um, there's been a rise in terms of, like, Asian representation. So there's a part of me that's like, okay, all right, like, it's slow going, which I'd much more prefer than just, like, you know rapid stuff um that gets a little chaotic and yet i'm like all right well we'll see you know it might be a little while and then again like it just might turn into nobody cares Mm -hmm. and by that i mean like the representation is there but it's just it's just accepted it's not that big of a deal right like the i would love to live in a world where actors and actresses do not need to come out that they get to live their lives like they always will, that they always had. And it's not a big deal or potentially career-breaking moment when they decide to come out. Um, I would love to have a world where all of our um, representation is normalized, where you can build these romantic, you know, a romantic comedy with two same gendered people loving each other is not as nail biting on whether it will get ratings uh, because it is seen as just another representation of love. Just Mm -hmm. another rom-com or just another movie. Right. Right. I think that's fair. I would Um, love Dean Dubois, Dubois to be you know in a movie with his you know with a another like bearish guy on his arm going at it and no one bats an eye well he's not much of an actor or more of a i i understand I, someone like him or just dean our 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 dean can just send me videos like i don't you know whatever <laughs> <laughs> you know i see where you're where you are now yeah I've been personally told, I don't think this is speaking out of turn or telling tales. I've been personally told that if I ever make it to California and I meet him, um, I will have no problem catching his attention to have a conversation. Oh, look at you. And I just. And I was like, uh, okay. And honestly, <laughs> I'm still kind of flabbergasted, surprised. I don't know. Like, and this is someone who knows him personally. Like, I was just like, uh, all right. Like, that feels odd strange and yet at the same time i'm like i'm i'm all right with that like (laughs) me (laughs) me yeah yeah right (laughs) so 
Can I train your Please. dragon? Oh, God. <laughs> that is one thing I would not say in his presence because I imagine people have unfortunately said really bad shit like that already to him. Right. So, yeah. How about I train your dragon? Finger guns. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts on, on the topic? I'm here. Not really, but uh, Hollywood, we would like to see more uh, uh, fat bearded men. Absolutely. John Reese Davies, God bless him. Mm. For a long time. Uh, Andre the Giant. Oh, yeah. Uh, damn it. Who who was that? Um, mm, sorry, I'm like... Uh, Now I'm like rapidly like looking for somebody. Uh, Zero Mostel. Oh gosh. Fiddler on the Roof. That takes you back. Well, because uh, because the, there were there were very specific people at very specific times. Like we're part of a generation where there wasn't much mm -hmm. in in the media landscape, so to speak. So you kind of latched on. Um, uh, duh, because this is totally gonna like. I can't remember. Um, Dan Haggerty, mm. like Grizzly Adams. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Long time uh, bear aficionado. Yeah. It, this is how a lot of people have, had realized their their sexuality. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, Grizzly Grizzly Adams specifically probably like became the the fantasy that many many a man had. Uh, David Huddleston. Why am I not he played Santa in the Santa Claus movie? Oh right, uh, yes. Uh, let's see, 2014, he was in Locker 13. He's been in Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Jericho. Mm. Some Gilmore girls. He's an actor. Oh, John Goodman. Right. Yeah, I remember when the new Roseanne uh, second series came out. People were really kind of dismayed that John Goodman lost a bunch of weight, um, and I was like, "Well." Eh. I mean, part of me gets it because, like, you have this uh, I memory slash fantasy, whatever, in your head, mm -hmm. and then you know, yeah, people people change, people will change. But there has been representation, but not actually gay representation of the body types that we're looking for. So more of that, please. <laughs> right. With anything, we have uh, gay and trans uh, representation, things like Star Trek Discovery. Because mm -hmm. we have uh, Stamets and what's her name or their name? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember all the characters' name. Um, but we also had uh, Ensign Tilly, or what is she, a Lieutenant Kit Tilly now? Um, who's. Uh, on the bigger side of things. I actually think that through the uh, course of discovery, she got a little bigger. I have a, I have a side theory about that. We'll discuss it in post show. Um, anyways, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was Paul Stamets and Hugh Culber of, of, of which both of them made new ground because Anthony Rapp and Wilson Cruz are both gay male actors mm -hmm. representing an actual gay male relationship so instead of it being like half representation it was like both which i found very interesting mm -hmm. 
Uh, I will admit in the past 24 hours, I recently watched another video with David Harbour in it. Um, Mm -hmm. He is with his new partner, Lily Allen. It was Architectural Digest. They were showing off their new house. Um, And there's a part of me that's like, I have no beef at all if David Harbour ever wants to go back to the Red Guardian, like, build like where he just like packs on the pounds. I'm just saying <laughs> for the record. Right. Damn. Anyways. Now it's just turned into us like drooling over a different men. Anyways. I think we As... so. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's the end. Yeah. Uh who's your favorite bearish actor? That's my that's my prompt. That's my prompt for for comments. You can tell us in many ways, such as going to our website, cubsoutloud.com, shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 will Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also join our entourage chat, uh, which you can get to through tinyurl.com slash telegram dash C O L. If you would like to know when we plan on recording these shows, you can check out our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You get various accoutrements, such as this first uh, logo shirt. And consent is my four-play shirt, a hat, a mug, a handy towel. Mine is underneath the mouse. Okay. Um... All at Zazzle at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can get, uh, if you would like some of our designs, which were designed by Smashy, you can find more of his work at um, uh, tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Uh, you can also become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And you can always uh, send us a donation through PayPal at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, please, all on our, you can find us on all of our, uh, the uh, podcasts, platforms such as apple podcasts uh, google podcasts and spotify amazon audible some other places uh please rate us review us there the more you rate us reviews the more up we get in the algorithm the more higher up on also don't forget to like comment and subscribe because i'll put these videos up uh on youtube uh higher up We'd appreciate that very much. If you would like to find me anywhere on the internet, you can find me at box set box puppy box cup box something or other. <sighs> if you wish to get in touch with if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub Seven Nine. That's T H E A T R E C U B Seven Nine. Our most favorite related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Or for more safe for work. You can find me as DMA Gamer 79 on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as CareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.